So this experiment was indeed a thousand mice. It began in the, in early 2023 and it concluded about six months ago. And uh, we gave mice, as you say, these four things. We had 10 different treatment groups um, getting different subsets of those four things. Um, rapamycin, as you say, is a kind of the gold standard for life extension in mice these days. Um, pe many people have done it in different ways with different, um, you know, protocols and it works and we kind of know why but for us it's actually a kind of a, what what a scientist would call a positive control in other words we don't think that it's actually going to give much benefit in long-lived species like humans um but we still wanted to make sure that we were just doing the experiment well and pro uh, and and you know accurately so we included it for that reason the other three interventions Sorry, can i just go on to that with rapamycin is that sure. is that definitive now uh, what that it works in mice absolutely and that it won't work very well in humans also absolutely yeah okay. i mean essentially um to go into the details of that a little bit um Rapamycin is what's called a calorie restriction mimetic. It essentially tricks the body into thinking that it's not getting enough food when, in fact, it is getting enough food. And um, calorie restriction mimetics, indeed calorie restriction itself, when one is genuinely not getting enough food, um, have been shown for literally a century now to um, extend life. But it extends life a lot more in short-lived species than in long-lived species. And we kind of understand why that is. It's all to do with the frequency of famines of different lengths in, 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 the, in the actual wild. Um, but anyway, the point is, it's not going to be the Holy Grail for aging. Okay. The Holy Grail for aging is going to be a divide-and-conquer, multi-pronged um, attack on damage that the body accumulates, essentially preventative maintenance, removing different types of damage that the body does to itself throughout life. And so the other three interventions that we used in this study were of that nature. Uh, one of them was, as you say, um, basically young bone marrow transplant. We killed a lot of young mice and scraped out their bone marrow and um, purified out the stem cells, and then we injected those stem cells into older mice um, in such a way that some of those stem cells would, would survive long term. And uh, then the second treatment was gene therapy for, as you, as you say, it was for one gene called telomerase, which a lot of people know about. Um, it's a gene that's involved in allowing cells to continue dividing when they normally wouldn't. Um, and then the third thing was this drug, which is a type of synolytic. So a synolytic is a drug that removes a particular type of cell, often called zombie cells colloquially. Um, technically, they're called senescent cells. Um, and uh, they're bad for you. They accumulate th gradually throughout life, and the more we can get rid of them, the better. So these drugs are very popular right now. Some of them are even in clinical trials already. Um, all right, so we did those three things. And yes, well, basically, our goal was to demonstrate that we could get additivity so that, you know, you do more of these things, you get more of a life extension than you do if you only do one of them. And we did get that. The result was a little bit confusing in male mice, but in females, it was completely clear. Um, so, um, so that's pretty good, but not good enough because the actual magnitude of life extension we got was really only about the same as you can get just with rapamycin on its own. Um, or the calorie restriction on its own. So we want to see whether we can beat that. And we believe that the right way to beat it is to use more different things, more types of damage repair, so as to hit, hit, hit to, to tick more of the boxes, if you like. Uh, and um, so the next experiment we want to do will indeed be 2,000 mice, and it will be um, eight interventions. Mm. Uh, but it means it's going to cost even more. The first study cost three and a half million dollars. The next ones, we're going to do it in less than seven because we've identified um, a few cost savings, but it's still going to be five or six million. And um, so I'm spending all my time now trying to desperately trying to persuade people to help um, support that because I can't start the experiment until we know we can finish it. And yeah. indeed, most of the expense is right at the beginning. In 2025, you've got everything from whole body replacement. You've got some very, very sci-fi-esque sort of ideas um, and 
um, work going on in clinics. So if you were to, like, w- what is the eight going to be? Uh, w- w- what's, what's the combination likely going to be? Whole body replacement is definitely not ready for prime time. This is the idea of essentially growing a whole new body that doesn't have a brain, which we kind of know how to do, and attaching it to the head of an old animal. Um, this is, um, you know, a, ser- a, a serious area of study right now, no question. But it's not ready for prime time. Mm. Um, the um, things that we're going to do will be of the same nature that I just described. Either they will be things supplied in the diet, but mostly they will be supplied by injection. So there will be typically, you know, cell therapies and gene therapies, you inject them into the bloodstream typically. And um, we are, we're definitely ready to do that. So just as, long as, just as soon as we get the money, we have all the collaborators lined up, all the sourcing of the reagents, the place where we're going to do the experiment, all of that. We're pretty happy about um, about the design of the experiment. But as you say, there are lots of much more radical, well, there are, there are some much more radical approaches, which are, you know, often being pursued simply by people who are less optimistic than me about the potential, about the time frame for... Um, doing life extension what we might call the easy way which is by doing this multi-pronged approach you said there's going to be a cascade moment when one of these mice trials really shows promise mm-hmm. and that a lot more public funding will come in and that will then kind of accelerate this hockey curve the hockey stick curve that we're seeing do you have any predictions on when that would happen well it could be quite soon i mean um i think so, so there's a particular milestone that I've chosen to like highlight, which I call robust mouse rejuvenation. And it's defined in terms of the kinds of experiments that we're doing. So one thing I have to emphasize about the experiment we just did and the ones that we want to do going forward is we don't start when the mice are young. We start when they're already in middle age. So typical mice will live about two and a half years on average. We start the experiments when they're already one and a half years old. So they've got an average of a year to live. And when you do that with anything that we can do today, like rapamycin that I just mentioned, the amount of life extension that you can get typically is about four months. Mm-hmm. So I have to find robust mouse rejuvenation as same kind of experiment, start at 18 months in mice that would normally live to two and a half years, but you get 12 months of life extension. So they live on average to three and a half years. But so that means three times the effect size of what we can do today. And um, the question is, you know, how soon will we be likely to get to there? I think, honestly, my current assessment is that we've got an 80% chance of getting to that point with within the next three of these combination experiments. We might get there with the next, with the next one. You know, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I'm saying within the next three or four years, we've got a very good chance of getting to that moment. And yes, you're quite right. I believe that that will change everything in terms of the conversation around what to do about aging. Thanks for watching this Beyond Tomorrow clip. If you haven't subscribed yet to our main channel, join us there for conversations that can help you thrive today and flourish tomorrow. We'll see you next time.